The following is a hoop ball presentation. Hello and good morning. Welcome to the Hoop Ball DFS Today podcast. I am your host, Mike Patria, joined by my good buddy, Santino Cocon. We're here to break down this wonderful Thursday, March 11th card. we got a ton of games to talk about. As you guys may have noticed, this podcast is released a little bit later than we normally do. We're recording it the morning of the card rather than the night before. And that's simply because Santino and I got some lunch yesterday. And it uh, turns out Nashville hot chicken does not agree with either one of us um it was a it was a rough night for us needless to say feeling it in the morning a little bit too (laughs) so we're gonna power through this we uh we got to get through this it's a nice card we're really looking forward to this nonetheless santino how are you and i i have to say i mean the chicken might have been worth it man it was great chicken yeah it was some good chicken uh a little two mi or tmi or however they they say <laughs> now early in the morning i don't know if people are going to agree with that in their their lunch and breakfast but uh yeah it was some good chicken and i'm doing good this morning i'm feeling really good last night was not one of the better nights <laughs> um but yeah we're doing good today and we have a whopper of 11 games man it's if we're back to i, I think most of the the slates that we're going to see are going to be big slates from now on uh not a lot of rest for some of these teams Absolutely. And uh, yeah, maybe a little bit too much information for you guys, but you know, just to spice it up, no pun intended. I went with the medium chicken heat, uh, you know, different levels of the heat. Santino went to uh, hot. I think that it was one under the hottest that you could do. And we all know if you go to one of these chicken spots and you get the hottest that you can do, you're not going to enjoy that. There's no, it, it's a gag gifter. It's a gag. No, uh, it, was, it was good, man. No, no, you didn't. You got hot though, right? You didn't get. There was one that was above hot, I believe, when we were there, and that one is just like if you go to Buffalo Wild Wings and you get their blazing wing sauce, it's you know you're doing it for like a challenge almost. You're not actually enjoying your food, uh, but the chicken yeah. was great. I, I can well, deal with hot. I, I like my stuff hot. Now, it, as you mentioned, it getting the hottest is just all right. I can do it, but I want to enjoy it. So I, yeah. I get one one under the hottest because I still like it real hot. Yeah, see, I'm, I'm a spicy guy too, but Santino, uh, his his girlfriend's actually Jamaican, so he was introduced to the spicy culture uh, and has been one with it. Um, my girlfriend, she's Italian, French, Canadian, and can't cook, so uh, I do. I still have to kind of introduce myself to that slowly, slowly. Wow, man, slowly. you just burned her real early. Ooh, <laughs> yeah. I'm, gonna have, I'm gonna have to tell her that. <laughs> she, hopefully, she's uh, hopefully she supports and listens. She'll hear. It. But let's jump into this, man. <laughs> Quick shout out to our presenting sponsors, my bookie. If you guys haven't already checked them out, head over to my bookie. .ag, the number one, the most fantastic bookie site that is out there. The only one I use, the most reputable. And I give them my stamp of approval for good reason, guys. They are absolutely fantastic. And if you sign up on your initial deposit and you use that promo code HOOPBALL, H-O-O-P-B-A-L-L, you'll get a 50% amount deposit match on up to $1,000. So you deposit $1,000, they will give you $500 for free to play with. And hey, uh, even if you know betting sports isn't your thing, they have a fully-fledged casino platform out there for you to use, whether it's table games, slots, you name it. You can play it there 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Their doors do not shut. And you can social distance and still get your play in. So, guys, check out mybookie.ag. Use that promo code HOOPBALL. And then while you're out there, why don't you just open up another tab, get some Manscaped action in there. Uh, Manscaped, guys, we talk about them all the time. They have a line of fantastic products. You can get the Perfect Package Kit, which you hear me talk about on a daily basis. It is my travel kit whenever I leave the state or town. Or you could just try their products individually, whether it's the conditioner, the toner, if you just want to get the lawnmower 3.0 or the ear nose hair trimmer. Uh, they're all great, but I highly recommend that Perfect Package Kit. And if you go over there, use that promo code HOOPBALL20, you'll get 20% off plus free shipping. That is H-O-O-P-B-A-L-L-2-0 for 20% off plus free shipping from Manscaped. So, Santita, we got some games to get to, man. We, we, we talked enough. We talked about the chicken. We gave the ad reads. We got 11 games to jump into. First game of the night, Detroit Pistons traveling to Charlotte, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time game. For the Hornets, Devontae Graham is probable. Only name on the injury report, so they will be fully loaded, ready to go. For the Pistons, Killian Hayes and Jalil Okafor are ruled out, while DeLon Wright has been upgraded to questionable for this one after missing uh, some time, some some decent time. Uh, This game has a 221.5 game total. Charlotte's favored by 5.5 points. So, Santino, we have 11 games on the card. I'll pass it over to you for this Detroit Pistons team. Anybody standing out to you? 
Yeah, and, and you need to pass it. Collect that spit that's <laughs> forming in your mouth. I, oh, I can, dude, I it's can, in there. <laughs> you hear that thing falling? I up can there. hear <laughs> all that all that spit uh, forming on there. But yeah, this is going to be a, a a good game to attack on on both sides of the ball. It's going to be a fast paced team game. Not too too much defense on either side. Uh, sometimes the Pistons come out hard. Sometimes they give up a lot of points the uh, hornets play fast and they give up a lot of points uh so i'll have some exposure here uh grant at seven seven under 8k he hasn't he's missed the last few games before the break but he should be fully healthy now i uh, not on the injury report ready to go i think that's a solid price tag <clears throat> um especially in this matchup he looks he's gonna play the the three and the four both and i i like him here i think we can look at a couple other people too um Maybe Dennis Smith Jr. at 4-9 and uh, Saban Lee at 4-4. I don't mind either of them if for cheaper point guard options. I think we're going to have so much value on the slate that we don't have to go there, but uh, they, they do make for some. If you're doing more balanced lineups, they, they make for some solid plays there. Um, and I, I don't mind looking at Isaiah Stewart. He's still only 3,700. He's been playing, getting extra minutes here and there, uh, even with Mason Plumlee playing. So I think that uh, this helps them as well. They And I did see a report that eventually they might try and play both of them together. I don't know if it comes the first game after the All-Star break, but any extra minutes this guy can get under 4K, that's intriguing to me. Everybody else is kind of priced accordingly, even though the matchup is good. I don't know how much exposure I'll have just because we have so many games. If this was a seven-game slate, I'd probably have a couple more guys in my player pool on this side. Yeah, I can't fault you. We got a ton of games, but you touched on it. Both uh, playing extremely fast paces. Both teams actually pretty healthy, too. So I don't mind looking at a guy like Stewart for some value. Like you said, though, I don't know if it's going to come to fruition that they you know start alongside of each other in this first game uh, after the break, especially with Grant back. A lot of that Stewart minute, Stewart's minutes were coming with Grant off the floor. So we'll kind of have to wait and see. But I do like Grant at his price tag, 7700 It's a very fair price tag. He was dealing with a bruised quad, so I don't expect too, too many limitations for him as far as his minutes workload. And he should just be able to take advantage of this P.J. Washington matchup. So this guy's going to be, continue to have uh, team high in usage. And I just see, you know, 15, 18 shot attempts coming from him. And he you already know he's going to chip in those peripheral stats as far as the rebounds, blocks, and steals. I wouldn't mind looking at Dennis Smith Jr. Only if DeLon Wright's out. Probably not playing DeLon Wright even if he plays. I just want to see what kind of workload he plays. You know, if he's back, that kind of takes away Saban Lee from us a little bit as well. So I'm really probably just looking at Grant here. And then I could probably see a guy like maybe like Josh Jackson in a tournament. But like I said, a lot of that use is just going to get funneled right to Grant now that he's back in there. On the Charlotte side of the ball, though, they already kind of announced Lamella Ball is going to continue starting. He's going to stay in the starting lineup. Devontae Graham looks like he's going to come off the bench. One would imagine that, you know, one of Graham or Terry Rozier may get dealt at the trade deadline. So we'll have to keep our eye on that. But with this team fully healthy, uh, including Cody Zeller now, probably likely, <laughs> likely to start and be back in that starting lineup. Anybody that we can trust or go to on this 11-game card? Uh, and that's that's tough there because Lamella Ball is now 9K. Uh, he's been providing value the last few games if in, in total value if you if you count it. The last three, he had the 49, a 60, and then a 39. But I can't pay 9K for him, especially with Devontae Graham back. I know Lamella is starting. But Graham's going to get his minutes somewhere, and that just me. Even if they're starting Rozier, Ball, uh, some of them are going to lose a couple extra minutes here and there. And, and for 9K and 8K, uh, even in a good matchup, I really don't want to <clears throat> go there. Uh, I like Hayward. It all depends on where Grant is going to start um, in the lineup. Is he going to start at power forward? Is he going to start at small forward? He's probably going to guard Hayward anyway, but that that'll change whether I like him more uh, or not there. Um, it's uh, I think Cody Zeller at four seven is probably the best value on the team. Um, I'm looking at Malik Monk at five four, but now that Devonte Graham's back, I'd rather just go Devonte Graham. Uh, but those those are the two guys that I would look more. So Cody Zeller, Devonte Graham, I think they're in pretty solid matchups here and uh, fairly cheap, and you get exposure to this game on the other side of the ball without breaking the bank. All righty. I'm I'm good with Charlotte to be honest, man. I think you touched on it pretty well. I just think you know Hayward's probably the one guy I'd be looking at at 7,500. But with this slate, 11 games, some of the other value in that mid tier that we're going to have open up, I'm all set there. I don't I don't see myself landing on too much, but I wouldn't fault you if you wanted to. Next game, 7:30 Eastern Standard Time game, Boston Celtics traveling to Brooklyn. 
take on the Nets in this one. Should be a pretty exciting one. We get a little bit of uh, we get a couple narratives in here too, Santino, which is always fun. For the Celtics, Romeo Langford has been ruled out. Uh, that is it for the injury report. So Marcus Smart should be back, is expected to return to this lineup. He practiced at full contact. He said he felt good after the practice. So we'll have to see as far as limitations, uh, whether or not he gets a full workload or not has to be determined. One would imagine he's somewhat limited. For the Nets, Spencer Dinwiddie, Kevin Durant, Blake Griffin Tim, uh, are all ruled out. Timothy Luau Cabro is doubtful, while Jeff Green is being listed as questionable. For a game total, we have a 234.5, and, and we have a three-point spread being favored to Brooklyn. Pass it over to you, Santino. Let's talk about the Celtics team now that they are back and fully healthy. Yeah, it's been a while. Um, we'll have to see how much Marcus Smart is going to play, if he's going to have a minutes restriction or whatnot. I don't think he will. It's been, been a while, but that's always something to keep an eye on. Just because it was a calf injury, it was a lower body injury, and calf injuries and groin injuries and hamstring injuries and those those types of injuries, you don't want to rush them back because they can just get um, re-injure that, re-aggravate that, and be out for a, an extended period of time even after this. So uh, that's something to keep an eye on. But, I mean, you're, you're going against Brooklyn, and even though their defense has been playing a lot better, there is still some avenues to attack here. I think we can look at... Uh, like the the bigs, Robin will or Robin Williams, Jesus, uh, Robert Williams and, and Daniel. <laughs> Shout Tice. out the goat, man! Shout out the goat. <laughs> right? uh, Williams and Tice are both guys that we can put in our player pool. I don't really like them near the five k, but um, depending on what news we get and and so on and so forth, they make for GPP type plays um, in this matchup. I I think we can look at uh, Jalen Brown, Kemba Walker. Jason Tatum, all three of them at different levels. I don't know how much exposure I'll have to each, but I think I, I will have one of those guys in the majority of my lineups. Uh, it's just a fantastic matchup for them in a fast-paced game that expects to be very high scoring. Uh, so I definitely want exposure to one of those top three. I would like Marcus Smart at 6K. I just don't know at this time whether they're going to just throw him right back to uh, 32 minutes or whatnot. I, I don't foresee that, but... Uh, if they say he has no restrictions, he's ready to play 35 minutes, then at 6K, that's not bad either. Uh, yeah, I'm kind of in the same vein looking at this Celtics team. I generally want to look at their front court when they're going against Brooklyn. But, you know, these guys are all priced appropriately. There, there's some value in all three of them, including Robin Williams, which I can't <laughs> wait for people to see the thumbnail because I'm going to try to get Dan to post Robin Williams as the thumbnail for this. So people are just incredibly confused. Uh, they have no idea why. So <laughs> we'll see if that happens. Uh, but. If I'm looking anywhere, it's probably going to be, like you said, these top dogs. I think Tatum's a little bit too expensive for me. I love him in this matchup. Don't get me wrong. He's a stud. If I'm going anywhere, it's probably going to be Jalen Brown. I do like this matchup for him at 8,100. With everybody healthy, people are going to kind of forget about how talented this guy is. You know, he's dealing with the knee tendonitis and all that. That is going to be a worry for us going forward when we have to consider Jalen Brown. Is is he completely healthy? No, he's not. But it's still a fantastic matchup. It's a high-scoring matchup. I would like him probably more around that seventy-six to seventy-seven hundred dollar range. But at eighty-one hundred, there's still some uh, some meat left on the bone in that one. So wouldn't mind looking at him. And if I had to pick one of the centers, I, I am going to choose with. It's probably going to be Tristan Thompson, uh, forty-four hundred. But we have so many centers to talk about. You'll hear us talk about probably fifteen to twenty of them tonight. So do I end up on Tristan Thompson? Probably not. On the on the net side of the ball, Santino, I'll start over here. James Harden coming in at 11K, Kyrie Irving at 96. Irving gets that nice little revenge narrative going against this Celtics team. And it uh, just so happens that this is the game that Marcus Smart, Marcus Smart returned. I don't know. Uh, maybe there's a little bit of uh, competitive juice flowing in this. But I can see playing either one of these guys. If I'm looking at anybody on this team, it's going to be Harden, it's going to be Irving, and it's going to be DeAndre Jordan. Uh, with with um, Blake Griffin still out, uh, Jeff Green on the better half of you know questionable or doubtful, we should probably see, you know, 30 plus minutes from DeAndre Jordan against the Celtics team that does like to play big. So I don't mind looking at Jordan at 5,700. And then if you want to take your pick between Harden and Irving, I think both these guys are fantastic plays. You can't go wrong with either one of them. Um, if I had to pick one, probably still going to be Harden. I just love that ball handling usage that he's getting, knowing that he's probably going to be looking at another triple double in this one, potentially. Yeah, I think I would probably rather just play Tatum over Kyrie and, and take that $200 discount there. Uh, but I don't mind going either way. I, I would prefer Harden if you had the money, but that's 11 k That's a whopper to pay for people, especially on a big slate like this. But uh, we will have value, so it's not too bad. Um, but 
I don't. I, I like Nicholas Claxton at thirty-seven. I, I would prefer the two thousand dollars discount to DeAndre Jordan. I think that he's going to be playing in this one. There's no Blake Griffin. Jeff Green is questionable, and if he doesn't play, that's a very good boost to Claxton. Uh, if he does play, it kind of limits him a little bit, but. Um, I think two thousand dollar difference at Claxton can play in this game, and if he sees twenty minutes, uh, he'll, he will bring back solid value there. Uh, he's a better point per minute guy than DeAndre Jordan, and I'd rather just get that discount there. Do not blame you. Claxton's been mm-hmm. balling out. One but one guy I was really excited about. I think we touched on him probably about two months ago when he was still hurt, saying keep an eye on this guy. Uh, we know he's probably a little bit more spry than DeAndre Jordan at this point, but. That roadblock of Blake Griffin might cause some problems in the future. Mm-hmm. Next game, 7.30 Eastern Standard Time game. Atlanta Hawks traveling to Toronto. Toronto, actually really Florida, uh, to take on the Raptors. In this game, injury report-wise, it's a doozy. For the Hawks, Chris Dunn, DeAndre Hunter, and Cam Reddish all ruled out. And for the Raptors, still dealing with a lot of health and safety protocol goodness with Fred Van Vliet, Pascal Siakam, Patrick McCaw, Malachi wow. Flynn, and OG and Anobi. All ruled out. Terrence Davis is considered questionable, dealing with a left ankle sprain. For a game total, 228.5, with the Hawks favored by 1.5 points. This is going to be a fantastic DFS game, Santino, in my opinion. Really interested in this one. A lot of options to choose from. We'll start with the away team, the Hawks. Um, I'll lead off here. Trey Young coming in at 9,900. And, you know, starting to get that form back, starting to look like the Trey Young that we were used to before heading into that break, put up a monster game against Orlando where he came out and scored 32 and 8 and 4 for 54 DK points. Now, it's a great matchup knowing that they're going to be a little bit hobbled in the backcourt. A lot of their best defenders are out of this game. Nonetheless, I do not see myself going to Trey Young and anything outside of GPPs as a pivot off of some of these other high price guys. I just like some of these more expensive price guys a little bit more. Um, I do prefer him over Kyrie for with that being said. I uh, still don't see myself getting to him too much. My favorite plays on this side of the ball are going to be in the front court, man. Clint Capella at 7,900. Expected to suit up in this one. I have a ton of interest in him, knowing that he's going to be getting a fair share of just Chris Boucher and Aaron Baines. He should be able to dominate in this game. 7,900, I'm looking at 40 DK points. Nice smash cash value. He put up 52 DK points against them earlier in the season in only 28 minutes on 10 of 13 shooting. So Clint Capella is definitely an option of mine that I'll be interested in. And then I want to keep an eye on Bogdanovich at 3,500. Great value play, in my opinion, with Reddish um, already ruled out. Hunter's still out. They're going to integrate this guy. They were excited about getting him. Um, we were worried about the minutes rotation because all these wings available. But with some of them out, you know, slowly getting his minutes kind of worked up. Uh, he's played 20 minutes in the last one, 16 minutes in his first game back. One would imagine he's probably floating around that 24-minute range, maybe even a little higher in this one. So at 3,500, I have some interest in Bogdanovich as well. Yeah, I think uh, Capella, John Collins, two guys that I'm gravitating towards here uh, in a Really juicy matchup. There's no OG. There's no Siakam. Uh, they're smaller for Capella anyway, but there's just it's a it's a mismatch in that front court for both of those guys. Uh, and yeah, Bogdanovich would be the other guy I'm looking at. And at 35, I'm going to have a very heavy share of him with no Hunter, no Reddish. Uh, he just came back. He had his two games back. He played on both on the back to back, and then had nearly a week off after that. Uh, I expect him to start in this game. I don't think Tony Snell is going to get another start now that Bogdanovich is here. And um, I see thirty something minutes from him. I, if he's if he was playing twenty and sixteen on a on back to backs, and then had a week off to uh, recuperate, uh, get his stuff re- or get everything ready, make sure that it didn't feel any residual effects from coming back and playing it back to back immediately. I think he's going to start and play thirty minutes with no Hunter or Reddish here. And at thirty five hundred in this matchup, I love I really like it. Yeah, if we get thirty plus out of him, you could just lock <clears> him in. Um, you know. Me saying 25, I think that's the conservative approach. Uh, 30 is definitely in the cards, though. Like you said, he did play on a back-to-back. He's saying he's feeling good. Had that week off in the All-Star break. So, yeah, I I think Bogdanovich will probably be one of the more chalky and better value plays on this slate, especially knowing that we're going to want some of these guys on the Toronto side of the ball. You um, you ready to slide over there? Yep. All right. Ooh. I can there we jump. go, the spit. The spit. Yeah, I can can jump in. I'll take it. (laughs) Yeah, Uh, let's take this. I need a sip of water. We know that OG's out. We know that Van Vliet's out. We know that Siakam's out. Those are three three starters, three of their best players. Uh, so we know where we're going right after this. And Kyle Lowry's already priced. Him and Norman Powell are priced very appropriately, which kind of kind of stinks. At uh, eighty six hundred and seventy two hundred, I will probably like Lowry has the better matchup going against Trey, uh, but. 
Powell has been on fire the last couple games with all these guys out, and he's just getting so many shots. Um, so I don't, I don't hate going either way. I'd probably just go Powell between the two, save that fourteen hundred dollar discount. Uh, but we do have a ton of different options on this slate. So uh, if you can't fit them in, it's not a huge thing. But I, I think uh, both of them are in very good spots, and I would just lean Powell for the discount. Outside of that. Uh, it all depends. Is is Terrence Davis going to play? Because we saw him play 21 minutes in that first start, and then he played 32 minutes off the bench against Boston, and he was having a really good game, and then he got hurt. Um, if he's going to play again, and with all these guys out, at 4,300, I can take the dive there still. If he's not going to play, then there's just uh, Stanley Johnson, Bembry, Wontanabe. All these guys are going to have to get extra minutes, and they're all 3,500 and below. And that's just, you can dig in the, the bargain bin there and take your shot at one of those guys. Um, and that's where I'd be looking on this team. Don't blame me, man. There's going to be some decent value here. It's just trying to dissect and, and decipher which ones are going to be actually worth it. So, you know, looking at these value plays between, you know, Stan Johnson and Bembry, those are probably the two first guys I'd look at. You never feel confident in either one of them, but we know that they both have a decent floor and decent ceiling. Probably lean more towards Stan Johnson, just knowing that he played 30 plus minutes in that last one. So, uh, 3,500 solid value play probably won't be getting too much Lowry at 86. And I feel wrong about it because it feels like it's a little high for Lowry, but you know, knowing that this team, the usage going on, um, uh, around with, with Siakam, Van Vliet and OG all off the floor, Lowry sports about a 26.2, uh, usage rate. So about 1.7, uh, 1.17 DK points per minute. So he's a great play. I just, at 8,600, it just feels a little too expensive for me. And, uh, the, Oh, it's going to say, and it could be one of the last games yeah. in a Raptor uniform. I so. know, there's the narrative, because he's uh, already been coming out talking about it left and right, that he's getting traded. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. He even came out with a quote, uh, I believe it was yesterday or the day prior, where you know he will retire a Raptor, is what he said, even if it involves a one-day contract. So he's on the move. He's gone. Kyle Lowry is not going to be playing for Toronto for very much longer. So, yeah, you might be right. That is a narrative that we might have to explore if this does in fact be his last last uniform game as a Raptor. Um, the other option I'm looking at is Chris Boucher at 6,500. I I just love this guy if he's going to be getting the minutes. He played 35 minutes in that last one against Boston in a close one. Uh, shot 11 to 15, but this dude's one of the best point per minute guys on the court for this Raptors team. In fact, with all these guys off the floor, he averages the most amount of DK points per minute at 1.24 with a 24.6 usage percentage. So I definitely have some interest in Boucher. I talked about it earlier. There's a lot of centers to like. You just have to pick and choose. So if you're not getting some Boucher action, you're going with the value. Yeah, maybe you go with some of these other centers that we'll talk about. But Boucher is definitely one of my top options. And I know you're a huge Powell guy. <laughs> 7,200 is just uh, a little too much. I, all I could think about was in the water boy when he, <laughs> he, he, all three times he said uh, Boucher. Mama, mama said, mama said, uh, the great movie. Uh, any any Adam Sandler classic uh, is a good one. It's just they've kind of. Uh, I don't want to talk bad about Adam Sandler, man. But these Netflix specials, they, the deal that they roped him in to just basically hold him prisoner, and he just has to continuously churn out terrible movies until he's out of that contract. That's rough. Uh, but you see, hopefully when he's done with it, we'll get some good Sandler movies back. You ready to move on to the next one? Uh, yeah, I don't think they roped him in, but yeah. uh, I mean, it's, I mean, he's getting paid a fair amount. But uh, yeah, it seems like at this point, it's just like, all right, I got three movies left. Let's just pump another one. Orlando Magic traveling to Miami, take on the Heat in another game where we're expecting some significant injuries and some uh, significant value. For the Heat, Bam Adebayo, Avery Bradley, uh, and as we know, Myers Leonard, which we're not going to touch on that too much on the podcast. Needless to say, uh, trash is trash, Santino, and trash deserves to be taken out into the trash. And that's pretty much where I'll leave it with that whole situation in Myers Leonard. Oh, and then God. Gabe, that that was, it's probable. It? Yeah, it was definitely something. Um, something that we don't need to see in sports anymore. Something that we don't expect to see, not even in sports, a day to day life, man. This guy is he's a clown. He's a clown, needless to say. Um, and I do not support a lot of people supporting him. Uh, Orlando Magic, Cole Anthony. James Enos, Evan Fournier, Markel Fultz, and Jonathan Isaac all ruled out. And Aaron Gordon is being considered questionable. Possible that chance that he makes his return. And much like Kyle Lowry, it's hard to imagine that Aaron Gordon is in a Magic uniform for much longer. But the narrative is definitely a lot less juicy with that. We don't really care about Aaron Gordon. Two fourteen and a half game total. Miami favored by six and a half. So this will be one of the lower game totals of the night, if not the lowest. So not going to be tack, uh, attacking it and stacking it necessarily, but there's definitely some options to like. So I'll start with the Orlando team over here, Santino. If Aaron Gordon returns, I have no interest in him either way. 
I want to see what kind of minutes he plays first before I commit to paying a $6,800 price tag for him. But Nikola Vucevic coming in at 10-4, one of the higher price guys on the slate. But this matchup is going to be well worth it for him. Uh, you know, no Bam going against Kelly O most likely at center. He should be able to just feast. And we've seen the usage and we've seen what this guy's been doing all season long. And it, you know, as good as he is, it kind of still feels like it's slightly falling under the radar. I know the price tag showing it, uh, but he's not getting enough credit for how well he actually is playing. So I definitely have some interest in Vucevic at 10, four outside of that, probably not going with anybody else on this magic team. Yeah, I think Vucevic's in a, a juicy matchup. I really wish he wasn't 10, four, uh, He's just he has been playing great, so he's well he well deserved to be ten four. But uh, when you're looking at it, you're just damn. Uh, but fantastic matchup without Bam. So I don't. He is a really good pivot option for probably the chalkier type of uh, Giannis, Harden, Luca type of guys. Um, but yeah, he makes for a good play there without Fournier, without Ennis, without. Uh, Cole Anthony, there's going to be some different type of lineups, and depending on if Aaron Gordon plays, there might be a lot of value to go around here. Uh, like you, you expect Vooch and uh, Carter Williams to start. Ross usually comes off the bench no matter what. But what happens in that in the, on those wings positions? Uh, maybe if Gordon plays, he goes to the three, and Aminu still stays at the four, and then they start a different shooting guard. Uh, maybe Dwayne Bacon, uh, but I think uh, Amina would could be a guy I look at whether Gordon plays or not. I think he's ready to play extra minutes, and if Gordon doesn't play, uh, Okeke's probably going to be playing 25 or so minutes too. Uh, at the bargain bin, 3K. These aren't guys I really like since, since we have so much value, but they would be um, options if you had to fall on them. Outside of that, I really I'm not huge. I think everybody's priced appropriately. All right, we'll slide over to the Heat side of the ball. Uh, you know, no Bam out of bio. Obviously, that opens up some value and some usage, so we can expect Kelly Olynyk to most likely slide over to center. At 5,100, he's a great play. Uh, don't mind him whatsoever if he's going to be playing 31-plus minutes. He only played 19 minutes in this last one and put up about 15 DK points. So if we could see 33 minutes, we could expect about 25 to 28 DK points as a floor, in my opinion. So I definitely have some interest in Kelly O in there. And then I like Jimmy Butler, but at 9,500, it's almost like that Vucevic, uh, you know, same vein as Vucevic that we were just talking about. Great matchup, great situation. Could be looking at a triple-double in this one, uh, knowing that there's no Bam. He's going to just have the ball in his hands pretty much 80% of the time. So a little expensive for my liking, but I wouldn't fault you if you want to go there. Just low game total and an expensive price tag probably has me leaning to some of the other options. And then we can look at Preston Sachuawa. Precious. Uh, yeah, get your in my precious. Uh, 3,400. He's not going to start, most likely. He'll probably play off the bench, but he should be looking at anywhere between a 15- and 20-minute roll. If this game gets out of hand for any way, shape, or form, it only goes up to maybe about 24. So I don't mind looking at him at 3,400. Probably wouldn't be pairing him with a guy like Olenek. I'd probably play him as a pivot or a one-off in that kind of situation. Anybody on Miami that I missed that you're interested in? No, I think everything you said is is where I'm looking at, too. I think Butler in play, but I mean, there's just there's so many options. I don't know if I'm going to go here in this slow environment. I think Olenek makes for a decent play, and, and Precious at 34. He might start at power forward. Uh, depends what they how they shake up that front court, but there's not really too many options in the front court for them. Um, yeah, I'm with you, man. All right. Next game, New York Knicks travel to Milwaukee. Take on the Bucks in this one. For the Bucks, just Jordan Nuora. He's rolled out, left ankle sprain. For the Knicks, Taj Gibson is questionable. While Derrick Rose, Mitchell Robinson, and Austin Rivers are all out. Derrick Rose, health and safety protocol. We know that Mitchell Robinson dealing with that right fractured right hand. And then Austin Rivers, the birth of his child. So there is that. And then four game total, 224 and a half with the Bucks favored by a whopping 10 points in this one. So uh, this is definitely going to be the largest spread of the night that we have available to us. We'll start with this Knicks team. I'll break it down for you, Santino. It's easy for me, man. No one. Oh, I like it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's different. Uh, with Now that Peyton's back, we're not going to the immediate quickly or, or Burks. We're when both of the hit Rose and Peyton were off. Um, I don't think it's going to be a blowout. I think it's going to be a hard fought game, but two of the better defenses in the league. And I'm with you. I don't really want to attack anybody on this massive slate when I'm looking at other people that are around everybody's price tags that I, I like a little bit better. All right. Why don't you talk about the bucks then? Anybody over there? Um, not 
that I love. Like Giannis at eleven one, I think it's a solid matchup, but I I trust other people in better matchups that aren't going against a rested Knicks team. Uh, Middleton at eight three, I think it's a solid matchup, but again, I, I just I usually don't like playing against the Knicks, and I'm seeing other people in all of these price ranges. Like we just mentioned, Kyle Lowry, who fantastic. Um, fantastic matchup right around Middleton's price. And I don't even know if he was going to be one of my premier plays. So I don't think Middleton makes it. Uh, Drew Holiday, is he going to be playing? I know he had another week off, but uh, they really limited him going into the All-Star break. I'm just not really in love with everybody. And then there's the blowout potential, even though I don't think it's going to be a blowout. But I'm just not. The only person maybe I'd look at is Bobby Portis for the, quote, revenge narrative. But at 40, I think there's so many center options that I like that I'm not going to gravitate towards there. I'm with you. Bobby Portis is the only guy I have interest in on this team. 4,500, I think, is a great price tag. He put up about 30 DK points in their matchup. Early in the season, he played about 26 minutes. Uh, whether he plays 18 to 22 minutes because the game stays close, I still think he can hit that value. If he plays the 26, if the game gets out of hand, it's even better. So I do like some Bobby Portis. And you touched on it, the center eligibility is tough. But on DK, he also has that power forward eligibility too. So we can we can get some use out of him in a couple different situations. So we'll slide on to the next game, though. 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time game. Minnesota Timberwolves traveling to New Orleans. Take on the Pelicans in this one. For Minnesota, Malik Beasley, Jordan McLaughlin, D'Angelo Russell all ruled out. Jared Culver is doubtful, but we don't care about him. He's bad at basketball. On the Pelican side of the ball, J.J. Redick has been ruled out dealing with that right heel soreness for this game 238 and a half game total with the pelicans favored by eight and a half points so this is definitely one of the higher game totals of the night that we've talked about if uh if i'm not mistaken it it is it is the highest game total of the night so definitely some exposure we're going to want on this timberwolf side of the ball carl anthony towns another guy coming in at 10k it's a great matchup uh it's it's a, a great pace everything else that goes with it we just talked about so many studs on this slate so I'll ask you, Santita, where does Carl Anthony Towns rank, and who would you rather play, Vucevic or Cat? Uh, so that's a tough one. I think this is a very good matchup for Ta- uh, Cat. I I would lean Vooch over over him, but I would lean. I would probably take the discount on both of those guys over Giannis. Can't fault you there. I'm kind of right there in the same boat. I prefer Vucevic, and I don't like I said. I don't think I get any shares of Giannis on this slate, so I do prefer both of them over Giannis. Some of these other ancillary options, Ricky Rubio should continue to see the bulk of the majority at point guard, and at 6K, he's definitely an option that we can look at. Is he my favorite point guard option? No, definitely not. I mean, if this game gets out of hand, he's going to play 24 minutes. If it stays close, he's going to hit that value at 6K. And that's what it comes down to. So, uh, definitely want to correlate your lineups and kind of game script them out and. You know, that's going to determine whether or not you're playing Ricky Rubio. So maybe if you're running it back with some other studs on the other side of the ball, get some Rubio action. And then this whole power forward situation that they're going through, we're just going to have to um, we're just going to have to wait and see. It's kind of uh, it's a it's a logjam, man. It's one that we are not happy with. I've been talking about it throughout the season uh, at nausea at this point, but they need to figure out what they're doing and have some consistency. We've heard them uh, you know, talk about this during the All-Star break, is that they are going to shorten the rotation and try to find some consistency at power forward. Now, does that mean it's going to be Vanderbilt? Does that mean it's going to be Lehman? Does that mean it's going to be Okogi? Is it going to be Nas Reed? Is it going to be Jared Culver when he gets back? We don't know. It's all annoying, but in my opinion, it, even Hernan Gomez, um, I didn't even mention it. could be anyone of yeah, it could be anybody. Uh, they're going to try to find the consistency, but we just don't know at this point. So I can't confidently say I trust any of these guys. If you wanted to look at anybody, I hate even saying it, but Layman's the guy that played the most minutes recently, and he's 3,300. He's just a bad basketball player, so I just don't go there, uh, especially with some of the other, other value that we've already talked about. You know, Bogdanovich, uh, only $200 more. I prefer him. So, man, for me, it's just going to be Cat. It's going to be a little couple shares of Ricky Rubio. I don't even think I'll go to Anthony Edwards at 6,700. And... uh Probably end it there, man. Yeah, I think even though the spread is the highest on the night, uh, the Wolves for me are strictly a GPP type of team. I don't trust them in cash because I don't know where they're what is going to happen. I know uh, Finch said he wants to shorten the rotation, and that might mean seven people, eight people play, which ton of extra minutes for everybody. But wait, who is getting them? We know Towns is getting them. We know Edwards is getting them. Uh, Rubio likely to get them. But who else is to get them? Uh, Towns is 10K. He's There are other options there. Edwards is 6-7. Good matchup, but there are other options. Rubio, 6. There are also other options. Uh, so everybody else, I'm, I would take stabs at those three guys. And 
just stabs at other people in GPPs because I don't know who's going to be playing and who might not even see the floor. That's the that's the tough thing that we're going to see. But um, uh, for me, I think there's a lot to like on this side because of the high game total and the expected pace of both teams. But uh, no one is safe. That, that's the best way I can put it. I agree. <clears throat> on the Pelican mm-hmm. side of the ball, though, we do have a couple guys that – I guess we consider a little safer. Zion Williamson coming in at 9,300. Just looks like a totally new dude. Going into that all-star break, he just looks aggressive. He looks dominant. He looks fit. Uh, and he's even been, uh, outside of that 8-16 of game, he's been shooting a little better from the line, too. So 9,300, not the price tag I want to spend up on. But it's a fantastic matchup. Again, if you're game scripting it, if you're running it back with a guy like Ricky Rubio or anything like that, he makes a whole lot of sense at 9,300. Over the past few games, he's pretty much been smack dab, hitting 50 points average. So... That's value. It's not the best value, but it's value. Uh, probably won't be going to too much Brandon Ingram on this slate. I don't mind it. 8400 It's a fair price tag. It's just looking like he's been taking a little bit of a backseat to Zion as opposed to last season. We saw Ingram being that dominant force, that number one option. He's kind of then re, uh, regressed to the number two option in this one. Not playing Bledsoe, not playing Adams. The only other option I'll probably be looking at uh, would be a little bit of Josh Hart at 5K, knowing that J.J. Redick has already been rolled out. He should be consistently seeing 30-plus minutes with Redick out. We know his rebounding upside. We know his floor is there because of that rebounding upside. And when it's all clicking and the shot's falling, he's got some pretty decent upside as well. So I do like some Josh Hart. Don't mind some Zion. And I know you're going to talk about Lonzo, so I'll let you do that. <laughs> Lonzo! Yeah, at 6'8", I'd rather just pay the $800 extra from Rubio or $100 extra from um uh, Edwards, I think he's a lot safer. Very good matchup for him, and we know the expected high, the high expected total. <clears throat> this is a type of game environment, a fast-paced game that Lonzo and Zion uh, they play really well. And I don't mind Zion here, but we again, there's just so many people that at some point we got to start knocking people out of our player pool. I think he's on the fringe of mine at 93 because it's super high for him, but he's just he's been very consistent. Very, very consistent. If you want a consistent 45, 50 points, he's your guy. If you want upside of 65, I, that's where the thing goes up. If you're looking at a cash game when you're just making a, a more balanced lineup, makes for a, a, a great guy. But if you're trying to get someone uh, with the upside to get 60, 65, Zion hasn't shown to do that. But uh, that doesn't fault him for being a <laughs> super consistent um, player on this. But, yeah, I like Lonzo at 6'8". And he's probably the other guy. The the two those are probably the two guys that I'd have the most exposure to here. I don't mind taking stabs at a Josh Hart at five, because um, we, we know JJ Reddick's not playing. Maybe Alexander Walker enters the rotation and plays twenty minutes or so, um, but can't really. That would be more of a GPP type pump play. Absolutely. We'll move on to the next <clears throat> game, eight p.m. Eastern Standard Time game. Philadelphia seventy sixers traveling to Chicago take on the Bulls. Going to be an interesting one, man, with this injury report, and definitely one that a lot of people are going to go to and target. For the Bulls, Laurie Markkinen and Otto Porter Jr. are both probable, expected to return. What kind of workload do we see? We don't know. They both said that they're feeling great in the day. They were able to do everything that they wanted to during practice and on the court, but it is their first game back after missing significant time. So keep your eye on that one. Probably not two guys that I'd be targeting anyway. On the Sixers side of the ball, Joel Embiid, Ben Simmons, Paul <clears> Reed, and Isaiah Joe have already all been ruled out of this one. So... The Sixers are going to be short manned, short handed in this, and there's going to be some value in it. Two twenty nine and a half game total. Chicago is actually favored by two. If I'm a betting man. I don't know, Santina. What do you think? I mean, Chicago's home, and they're missing their two. Or Sixers are missing their two best players. It makes sense to have Chicago favored by two. Uh, they played well to end the <clears throat> the the break there, um, but I'll jump in on the Sixer side. Uh, Tobias Harris becomes the alpha dog on this team. And at eight one, we mentioned a lot of people in the eight K range. Uh, Lowry would probably be the of the of them would probably be the other one that I think has a, a really good. Oh, and Jalen Brown, uh, so many people. But um, I think Harris is a guy we can look at in this matchup, knowing that Embiid and Simmons are aren't playing. And I know that means a lot of people are going to be looking at Seth Curry because he's has been getting a few starts. Uh, Shake Milton. Um, those two guys are options. People, a, a lot of people are, I know, are already going to be asking about Tyrese Maxey. As long as Milton and Curry are playing, Maxey is has just not been part of the rotation. So I'm not going to take the plunge there. Um, and Dwight Howard, but all three of those guys, Howard, Milton, and Curry, they aren't the value that you thought you were going to get when you first clicked on here. Uh, they're all five three, five three, five two. 
pretty solid value there, but not the um, or well, I shouldn't say all. Uh, Howard, you would have probably th- we would have thought was like four two at five three. Very good matchup still, but um, I'm just not in love with it with all the other options. I'll have a share or two of him, but I'm just not in love with it. I, I would rather just play Milton or Curry there. Yeah, I'm with the Milton bandwagon here, man. I'm going to be riding that train at 5,300. <laughs> I think he's just a fantastic option. We have, we've seen it plenty time and time again. When Ben Simmons is off the floor and this dude's playing point guard, his usage is sky high. He gets a fantastic matchup against his Bulls backcourt, who probably couldn't defend me and you. So... 5,300, I definitely, I, I wanted to see like 46, 47, but I still think there's plenty of juice left in the bone in that one at 53, uh, a guy that I'd probably be paying, you know, 6K for in this same exact matchup in the same kind of game script. So I definitely have some interest in Milton. You touched on Harris. He is going to be that alpha dog at 8,100. He's the guy I talked about. You know, we talked about some of these other guys like Gordon Hayward and, you know, guys in that 75, 7,800 range. It's just, it just makes more sense for me to pay up for the security of Tobias Harris in this matchup at 8,100. Seth Curry, Solid option. Same thing with Dwight Howard. 5,300. You know, Dwight Howard's a guy that I do love this matchup for him. It's just him, Tony Bradley. They'll probably chop up the minutes at center. Don't forget about Mike Scott. He'll probably see some time at center as well. So there's no guarantee that Howard comes out here and plays 30-plus minutes. It's it's that simple. <clears throat> but if he even gets 20, he should be able to pay off that price tag. You know, he only played 22 or 12 minutes against his Bulls team earlier in the season and almost managed a double-double, 10 rebounds. We know that this Bulls team is a little weak up front. I mean, they're pretty much weak defensively everywhere. So I, I don't mind looking at these guys just not banging in slot cash value and Dwight Howard that we would normally think it was with Joel Embiid out. On the Chicago side of the ball, with everybody healthy, man, um, we're paying premiums for these guys. Kobe White at 6500 I don't mind it knowing that there's no Ben Simmons. Um, he's going to have a little bit of an easier approach defensively. It's a fair price tag. If this game stays close, he should continue to see 30-plus minutes and just continue to chuck like he has been. So I don't mind him at 6,500. I don't think I'll pay that 97 for Levine just because we talked about so many other guys in that high 9K range that I do prefer. Um, don't mind him. He's a GPP target for me, though. That's it. I'm going away from the whole Thad Young and Pat Wills and Garrett Temple. That whole experiment that's been going on with these guys back in the lineup, it's kind of hard to trust them. Yeah, I don't really like too many people on this team or any. I'm, I'm probably not going to have. Bulls exposure, knowing that they are healthy for the first time in a long time, uh, maybe since the beginning of the season, because every time they got someone back, someone else went out. So I'm just, I I don't want to touch anybody in the front court. I know it's the first game back. I don't know how limited Markinen or Porter will be, but it does chop the minutes up for everybody else. Uh, Kobe White, you can look at. I don't know if I will have too much of him uh shake Milton's still a really solid defender if he's going to be on him um yeah i think I, i'm probably not going to have much chicago exposure i think it's going to be uh mixed like a, a team team type of thing there don't blame <laughs> you next game 9 p.m eastern standard time game dallas mavericks traveling to okc on the second half of the back-to-back uh dallas looked well played well last night luka Doncic looked spry with a nice another triple double for him uh for the Mavericks, no injury report because they did play yesterday. We're going to have to wait and see. But for the Thunder, George Hill, Josh Hall, Hamnan Diallo, and Trevor Ariza all ruled out. Trevor Ariza, I don't know why I'm saying his name anymore, uh, has yet to even <clears throat> suit up for this team. Two nineteen and a half game total. Dallas favored by six and a half points in this one. For me, it's simple. i uh, got to keep an eye on Porzingis on the second half of the back-to-back. He does play some of them. It's weird. The whole weird situation. It's After they came out and... On the first game that he played a back-to-back, they said they accidentally played him, and then they still seem like they accidentally play him time and time again here and there. So we'll have to keep an eye on that. But if he's out, Luka Doncic at 10-8, we should just see a ton of usage go his way, even though it's going to be there anyway. Don't mind Luka. I prefer him over some of these other high-priced guards. Uh, where it comes down to is you know, Luka or Harden. How does that decision get made for you? And I simply say it just comes down to some of your construction and your game script. I think they're both equally great plays. Um, if I had to pick one, I'd probably prefer Harden. But it's it's splitting hairs right there. It's it's really not a, a, a decisive decision in any way, shape, or form. And if Porzingis is ruled out, Max Kleber at forty two hundred should draw that, that start. Should see twenty eight to thirty minutes in this one. So he'd be the other option I'm looking at. <clears throat> That's probably it. I, I don't mind looking at these wings guy wings between Hardaway Jr., Richardson, and Brunson. I think they're priced appropriately at that five K mark. But we just started talking about other guys like Shake Milton and some of these other five K guards that I prefer over them. Yeah, for me, I think. Kleba is the only guy that I look at if Porzingis is out. I think 4-2 is a very solid price tag. Uh, if Porzingis is in, <clears throat> not gonna, 
I don't, I'm not going to really touch anybody on this team. Uh, I prefer Harden over Luka. If Porzingis is out, it closes the gap, but I still prefer Harden over Luka. The Thunder are just a very slow-paced team, and they keep it mostly competitive, and if they don't, it's uh, you're, they're not going to be playing Luka too much, but they, it, they're never in a 130-130 type of scoring game, so I just would rather spend up for, for Harden if I'm going to go there. Absolutely. We'll slide over to the other side of the ball. On the OKC side, Shea Gilgis Alexander coming in at 8,900. <clears throat> the dude's been playing great. I know, you know, he had a little bit of a, a bumpy start to the season, but looks like he's fully healthy and he should continue to just be the usage monster that he is on this team. But at 8,900, I can't see myself going there with all these other guys that we talked about. In fact, the only option I have any interest on in this uh, on this OKC team would be Al Horford, simply because the Dallas Mavericks couldn't defend a center to save their life. And Al Horford, when he gets the minutes consistently, he's pretty solid. Do I end up even going to him? Probably not. We talked about about 11 centers already who I do like a little bit more. So I'll pass it over to you, Santino, to see if you have any interest before we move on. I'm in a similar boat. I think Al Horford, for the price and the matchup, is, is the one that I would look here. But I don't think I'm going to even touch this game. Uh, at 6-2, I don't know if I want to spend up for Al Horford. Uh, hopefully, he comes back like he did in the last time when he missed uh, two weeks or so with the birth of his child. Came back firing. So maybe this week off helps him regroup and comes back firing. So that that would be the saving grace for that 6-2 price tag for me. But uh, I don't really want to touch anybody else. Nothing like seeing the kiddo motivation for uh... – <laughs> Yeah, and I just look at Boucher for $300 more. I think I'd probably just end up landing on Boucher. Next game, 10 p.m. <laughs> I'm sure everybody loved hearing that with their <laughs> with their headphones blaring. <laughs> we got uh we got three games left. These are the um, three 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time games, so they will be included on that late game showdown or um, not showdown late game slate. That late game main card. Golden State Warriors traveling to L.A. to take on the Clippers in this one. This will be an exciting game, and I'm sure a lot of people will be watching this. Uh, probably one of the better games of the night. Funny thing is, we have no injury report for either team. Weird enough. Uh, we'll have to kind of monitor the news, and if there's any team we, we'd hope to have an injury report for, it, it would be the Clippers with all the shenanigans. The shenanigans. I know you love to say that word, so it's a fun word to say. Shenanigans. What's that, that, what's that restaurant you like, Farva? Oh, yeah, sh- shenanigans. <laughs> <laughs> Great movie. Again, we're just shouting out all the good comedy classics here. We had some Adam Sandler, some Robin Williams, and now we're bringing in some super troopers, man. Oh. <laughs> I some classics, uh, but yeah, so we're gonna have to wait and see, but we have a game total and we have a spread, which makes no sense because usually we don't see one of these if we don't have a Clipper injury report, but 231 and a half game total Clippers favored by seven and a half points in this one. We'll start with the Golden State Warriors here, Santino, and it's just going to be in the stud loaded slate. You're gonna have to make some choices and Steph Curry pops in at 10 two in a matchup where. We generally see him thriving. Uh, when these two teams face off, we're either going to get you know a 50-point actual Steph Curry game or he's not hitting value. It's one or the other. So for me, it's GPPs only for Curry uh, in this matchup. 10-2, I don't mind paying that price tag. Outside of him, the only other option I'm looking at on this uh, on this Golden State team would be Draymond Green at 7-3. Just knowing that if he's going to get consistent minutes, uh, he's a guy that can stuff the stat sheets. He's not one of my favorite plays on the slate, but I would definitely look at him if I'm looking at uh, you know late game main card kind of thing. And then Wiseman, we're going to have to keep an eye on him. He missed a COVID test during the time off, so he's questionable for this one. Decent chance he might have to sit this one out because of health and safety protocols. If that does happen, we should see a couple extra minutes go to guys like Juan Toscano Anderson. But for me, man, I don't have a ton of interest. It feels weird saying it. With an exciting game that I know I'm going to want to watch, I don't want to play a lot of guys in it. Um, Similar to you. I'm not going to really play anybody here. The Wiseman news <clears throat> is kind of big for me, knowing that if he does miss this game, uh, Draymond Green becomes more appealing to me, even though he's 7-3. Uh, Looney, at, at the bare minimum, 3K, becomes a little bit more appealing to me. Maybe even some JTA, but I probably would go Looney there. Um, if he does yeah, play... On that one, I, I agree with you. Looney over JTA. If, if he does play, I'm not going to play anybody in this. I uh, I know it's hard to say. You're, I'm going to I'm going to watch this game, and I'm going to probably bet on this game. But I don't think I'm going to bet on anybody in, in DFS. Looking at all the price tags and seeing all the other options we get. Uh, you mentioned Curry. He's in the two games. He he had a good game. He had a bad one. Uh, he's averaging just uh, 49.9. So we'll say 50 DK points. He's hitting value in the two games against the. Um, I mean, my bad, uh, 48 DK points in the two games against the, the Clippers, so he's pretty much at value. 
but I just would rather go with the upside of, of a Harden. I know he's a couple hundred more. Um, and then we have other options out there too. Uh, so right. yeah, I'm with you. I'm probably not touching it. I don't think we're going to get Wiseman's news in time. So I don't think I'll have any exposure here. Yeah. And then sliding over to the Clipper side of the ball, it's, uh, it's tough, man. <laughs> you no, know, we have to, we love Kawhi Leonard. We love Paul George. We like the matchup. We love the price tags. Both these guys under nine K got to have interest in both of them. Do they play? Do we know? That's the question. And the answer is no. I, I mean, who, who really knows with these two guys right now? But it's a chance. And in GPPs, they're fantastic options just because I can't see a ton of ownership going towards them with all these other studs to pay for, with all the news that's been surrounding them and, and the question marks, whether or not they're going to play. They're going to be good GPP options. Do we trust them in cash? That becomes a little bit more risky. So proceed with caution on those guys for cash. But in tournaments, you can fire them up. Uh, and be okay with it. Just understand that if you get a late scratch, just be ready to adjust. We have three 10 o'clock games, so there's plenty of guys we could adjust to. Uh, and that's the, been the name of the game this season for DFS. If you're not there to adjust and take advantage of late scratches and lineup swaps, you're, you're not going to be cashing as often as you probably could. Uh, outside of those two guys, not a ton of interest. I mean, we can look at, oh, thanks, Mr. Harley motorcycle guy driving by as we're trying <laughs> to record a podcast. Appreciate that one. Um, I don't mind looking at some of these guys in the front court. You know, Zubak, Abaka. They're okay. Probably not going to go to them. If I preferred one, it would be a Baca. And then now that this team's kind of healthy, you know, we can't really necessarily go to the fantastic value that we've had. But to them at, at 45, I think that there's some some juice left on the bone. A guy that consistently just turns out, you know, 20 to 30 point games. If you get the 20 point, you're not as happy. You get the 30 point, you'll be happy with that. Uh, but with all this value, I don't I don't know, man. I don't see myself going to too, too much of them. But I could see myself playing, you know, George and Leonard in the, the GPPs and maybe a little bit Batum here and there. And the first two games that Claw played against this team, he's only averaging uh, 35 DK points, so he's underwhelming at this price tag. I don't, he's, I don't think that'll happen again necessarily, but I would probably prefer Paul George of the two, <clears throat> and I expect both of them to play. Uh, they do, they both have pissed me off because the last two podcasts <laughs> I've done, uh, my favorite high-priced guys, the first one, Kawhi Leonard. Then he got scratched two minutes after game time. Then Paul George was my favorite. And he got scratched 15 seconds before lock. So they both have put sour tastes in my mouth the last two games, and I'm very upset about it. Um, but yeah, I don't know if I'll have too much exposure there. Zubats is 4-7 now, like you mentioned. Uh, Ibaka, 4-6. Not, it's a good matchup. It's a fun matchup, a fast-paced matchup. But the, the Warriors are a really good defensive team. If I do go somewhere, it would be George. Uh, but I'm just... I kind of sick to my stomach that they did that to me <laughs> two games in a row. Bad taste, man. That happens. You get a bad beat. You get a bad burn. Twi- uh, it's hard to go back twice. And and it's the thing. Um, they both played in the All Star game, so there's no reason. There is no reason they should not play in this game. But um, we'll see what happens. Like you said, next game and this one, one of my favorite games on the slate. Really looking. Add some juiciness in here. We have the Houston Rockets going against the Sacramento Kings, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time game. For the injury report, the Rockets, a lot of bodies on here. Dante Exum, Daniel House, Rodion Kurex, Dave, uh, David Nwaba, Christian Wood all ruled out. Eric Gordon is questionable on the Kings side of the ball. Only thing we need to monitor is Hassan Whiteside. He's been ruled out. Health and safety protocol is still dealing with that. 228 and a half game total. Sacramento favored by four and a half points against this terrible Houston team. But as for terrible as they are, there is going to be some sauce for DFS in here. I'd have a ton of interest in both of those guys in the backcourt. 8,200 for both Victor Oladipo and John Wall. I think they both smash these price tags. I love them both. I always talk about targeting shooting guards against the Kings, so that gives uh, Oladipo a nice little bump for me. Probably still prefer Wall. Push comes to shove. I just love this matchup for him. But these guys are both fantastic plays, and they're both in play. Outside of that, the only other guys I'm really looking at might be a guy like Sterling Brown at 4,300. With all these wings out, he should see significant minutes. Not a great point-per-minute guy, especially knowing that you know Victor Oladipo and John Wall are healthy. There goes a lot of his extra ball-handling responsibilities. But at 4,300, there's worse options we could take a look at. That's it for me. Those are the two guys, or three guys I'm looking at. Yeah, and um, we might... It depends on if Justin Patton starts this game. We might have a uh, a weird starter here because there is no house, there is no Nwaba, there is no Wood. Uh, we know Wall and Oladipo, assuming they both play, uh, are going to start. We don't know what's going to happen with Eric Gordon. Um, th- there's just a lot of people out there. And Kevin Porter Jr. just got called up. He's only 3,200. Does he play 20 minutes or so if, um, if Eric Gordon plays, if he doesn't play? 
there's a lot to unpack here, but I'm going to be taking stabs at a wall in Oladipo. Uh, if I, I don't have too much exposure in the early games, you know, if you if you have some uh, spots left open, this is a game that I would be looking at Eric Gordon's news there because you can take sh- more shots at Kevin Porter Jr., uh, Sterling Brown, even Jayshon Tate here, uh, knowing that fantastic matchup and there's just a lot of bodies missing on those wings. Absolutely. <clears throat> Don't mind that call. And yes, as far as Kevin Porter Jr., we're going to have to kind of wait and see exactly what sort of role he has. And if he even suits up in this one, there's no guarantee. On the King side of the ball, though, we will slide over. Uh, we are cutting it close on time here. We're trying to keep this under an hour, so we're going to turn it into overdrive right now. Darren Fox, 9100, great matchup. Price tag's up there over 9K. Don't mind it, though. Um, probably won't go there. We talked about a few guys over 9K already. Tyrese Halliburton is expected to return in this one, may have some sort of minutes limitation, so we have to keep an eye on him as well. Probably won't be going to him at 6,700. But the front court, definitely some interest here. Marvin Bagley at 6,600. He's been playing well. Um, good matchup for him. Definitely a great matchup for him. Just don't see myself going to it. I don't know, man. It's tough for me to have any interest in any of these guys. I can see Buddy Heald having a great game, but he's in that fair price tag where I just don't see myself going to. I'm all yeah. set. Uh, I like I like Rashawn Holmes in this one at 6'5". I think very good matchup. Uh, nobody on Houston <clears throat> poses too much of a threat to him, uh, so I, I don't mind going there. And then uh, Heald... I mean, not uh, healed at six six. I just don't know. But Halliburton and Barnes are a little bit intriguing to me. I don't know if I can lock them in early, but I, I expect solid games from both of them, and I think they're both going to exceed value. All righty, well, let's move it on. Final game of the night: Phoenix Suns traveling to Portland, take on the Trailblazers in this one. For an injury report, Devin Booker is being considered questionable, dealing with a left knee sprain. He's getting praise from the coaching staff, saying that he took this All Star break to really just get right for the team. Uh, kind of dealing with some maintenance issues. Cam Johnson has already been ruled out. And for the Blazers, Harry Giles, Zach Collins, C.J. McCollum, Yusuf Nurkic, the regular bodies that have been out will continue to be out. Uh, I think Nurkic's actually expected to be reevaluated pretty shortly, so we'll have to kind of keep our eye on him. 227.5 game total, Phoenix being favored by 2.5 points for in this one. For me, it's simple, man. On the Phoenix side of the ball, if Devin Booker's ruled out, I will be playing a ton of Chris Paul. And as we broke down this slate, man, it's seeming like it's more it's being more fair and balanced for me. I don't even know if I end up with any guys over 10K, as foolish as that might sound. I might just hit this fair and balanced 8K approach here because I like a lot of guys in that range. But Chris Paul at 7,800, I think he comes in as a fantastic play with no Booker this game. I mean, Portland's been playing great. As good as Phoenix is, this should be a competitive matchup. Uh, and if Chris Paul is playing 30-plus minutes with no Devin Booker, hard to imagine he doesn't hit value. Same thing with Aiton at 6,900. It's a fantastic matchup for him regardless. I love this matchup for him. Um, at 6,900, it's hard for me to imagine that he does not hit value, whether Booker is in the lineup or Booker's out of it. If Booker's out of it, it's only that much better. Again, ton of value over here. Dario Sarge at 4,300. He's just been kind of turning out solid games after solid game. Looking like he has about a nice 20-point floor. We've seen a 33-point ceiling in there as well. Definitely a guy that I could see myself getting a share or two of. And then if there is no Booker, we're going to have to look to see who would take advantage of that. And it looks like it's going to be our main man, Abdul Nader. So, uh, small forward eligible, played 24 minutes, 23 minutes in the past two games, put up about 20 DK points at least in both of those. If there's no Booker, he should probably be looking at 30 plus minutes in this one. So uh, a value play that we could consider. But where does he fall in the range of the Bogdanoviches? He's in there. Uh, probably still prefer Bogdanovich a little bit more, but some late game exposure doesn't hurt. And uh, Booker's expected to play in this one. Oh, is he? I know he went a lot of is there no oh, Booker, okay. but he's, hey. he's expected to play. And I, uh, Monty Williams said that if it was a playoff game, he would have played before the break but uh, or in the All-Star game. But I, I'm assuming he's going to play in this one. They said he's likely to. So um, I don't know how much exposure I'll have to this team, even though it's a good matchup. Without that, I think Sarek, like you mentioned, he's been playing pretty well. Um, <clears throat> I don't trust DeAndre in good matchup. Just don't trust him. Uh, I don't expect I, – I can't trust him to get 40 DK points. I just can't. He's not. He hasn't shown it much at all this year so don't trust that uh, if booker did sit paul is is lock and load type of guy and, and you mentioned nader at uh, 3300 you can go there um but i think paul does or booker is expected to play so i i think it's just tough for me to go to the the suns team who play just at the slowest pace in the league and um uh, very team oriented and that's why they're second in the west right now 
All right, Portland side of the ball, all set here, Santino. <laughs> what do you got? <laughs> yeah, it's the same thing. Uh, not trying to, just like I said, I don't like to attack the Knicks. They're, the Knicks are pretty much the east of the, the sons of the east. Slowest teams in the league, the two slowest teams, and two top six defenses. Just uh, as good as Lillard is, there's better alternatives there, and everybody else on this team outside of Lillard that is healthy is just not trustworthy. Boom. That is it. 59 minutes, 52 seconds. We have eight seconds to get out of here. Thank you guys for listening. It has been a fantastic show. If you have a second, you want to give us a follow on Twitter. You can find me at Mike Apatria, M-I-K-E-A-P-O-T-R-I-A. You can find Santino at Santino Cacone. That's S-A-N-T-I-N-O-C-A-C-C-O-N-E. If you guys have a second, go to the Apple Podcast. Give us a five-star, a rate and review. It means a lot to us, guys. Uh, we put in a lot of time, put in a lot of effort means a lot when we get to see some of the good feedback that you guys give us a nice little perk up in our chair and if it's constructive criticism we take it to heart we try to put out the best shows that we could so if you got something that you want to say help us improve lay it out there just put a nice little five star on there too and then the constructive criticism all works the same but thank you guys for listening we will be back tomorrow looks like it's going to be uh it's gonna be brenton i believe running solo solo dolo might actually have will on with him you have to wait and tune in to see Thanks for listening, though. Let's go out there. Let's crush some lineups on this nice 11-game card. Take care, guys. This has been a Hoop Bowl presentation.